All right, now let's put our hands together for our webinars MC Chia En. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chia En, your MC for tonight's session. So first of all, I would like to thank thank Evigy Network and my upline for introducing Elite Global Career into my life. I would also like to thank you for taking your time to join us this evening. So before we begin, our AV team has put your Zoom on mute to allow the session to run smoothly without interruptions. And later on, we will have a Q&A session. If you have any questions, you can unmute to voice out your questions, or you may use the chat function to type in as well. And pictures will be displayed during the presentation. If you can, uh, can't see clearly, you may zoom in for a clearer view. So talking about today's topic, allergies, actually allergies affect many people around us, which we may not know it, but in fact, Allergies affect many people, including myself as well. So with the medical advancement, there is currently no cure. And we can only seek temporary relief from medications. But how can we cohabitate with allergies more freely? Is there any ways we can cope with allergies better? So today we have a speaker who will share with us today's topic for us to understand more on allergy. So let's welcome Darren to share with us more. Thank you, Jian. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Darren. So let me start by thanking EBG for giving me this opportunity to share this preventive sign that brings health and longevity to mankind. So today's topic. <clears throat> give me a second. So today's topic is allergy awareness. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, are you worried about allergies? So one of my friends once asked me, he often has these rashes and his skin is prone to redness and swelling. So is this considered as a skin allergy? So some people also say that they will suffer diarrhea after eating certain foods. So does it mean that they're allergic to certain food? And some people will have itchy eyes, watery eyes, running nose, never ending nasal drip and sinus stuffiness regularly. Does that mean having nasal allergy? So allergy can be extremely, extremely annoying. And do you know why is that so? Because there are no medication to treat or cure allergy. So allergy is very common these days and more and more people are suffering from this allergy, especially in developed countries. So about 20% of people suffer from allergic rhinitis. And in the United States, 40% of children suffer from allergies. About 6% are allergic to at least one of the food allergens. And 20% of people have had the, you know, atopic dermatitis. And in fact, 1% to 18% of people have asthma. So, is it so common nowadays? I mean, how can we prevent it then? According to the data I just mentioned, we know that allergy is very common nowadays. And under, under the normal circumstances, the B cells in our body will produce antibodies to protect us from diseases. So what is allergy? So allergy is actually a battle without enemies. So, so why is it called a battle without enemies? So allergy occurs when immune system no, launches uh, an attack on non-threatening substances and the body will have an allergic reaction. So uh, the World Allergy Organizer reported that uh, from 2011 to 2012, about 40% of people in the world suffer from at least one allergic disease. Wow, that's, that's proving that more and more people are suffering from allergies. So when the human body is infected with uh, bacteria or viruses, you know, your B cells will produce IgA, yeah? IgM, IgG antibodies to fight these germs. <clears throat> As for patients with allergies, uh, his B cell will produce IgG antibodies in a short period of time when he comes in contact with an allergen. So this will be uh, sometimes life-threatening. For example, some people are allergic to peanuts. And when they consume food that has peanuts in it, you know, his B cell will produce IgE uh, immunoglobulins within a few minutes to a few hours, you know, which will quickly trigger allergic reactions such as like swollen eyes, allergic symptoms such as uh, itchy skin will appear. So what are the common allergies then? 
So these are the three main types of allergies. <clears throat> so respiratory allergies, skin allergy, food allergy. So all allergies are caused by some kind of exposure to one or more allergens. Uh, first, let's talk about uh, respiratory allergy. So respiratory allergy. So what are the symptoms? You know, symptoms would be like you know sneezing all the time. You know, uh, running nose, especially when uh, waking up in the morning. You know, nasal congestion at night when sleeping. Difficulty in nose breathing. Basically, uh, can only breathe through mouth. Something uh, you know through your mouth. So some people will cough constantly also, and uh, uh, eyes can easily shed tears unconsciously. You know, some people with respiratory allergies will have dark circles under their eyes as well. So this may be symptoms of allergy. So about 20% of people suffer from uh, allergic rhinitis. So respiratory allergy, including uh, allergic rhinitis, mainly because of exposure to allergen. So allergens like you know, uh, dust, pollen, dust mites, and pet dandles, that is the saliva and urine. So do you think that these dust or pollen are actually really a threat to us? I'm sure no, right? So, but if our immune system is haywire, you will treat these harmless substances as uh, harmful substances and start attacking it. And this will result in allergies. So I believe that we might know people that have, uh, say, asthmatic problems. So speaking of asthma, there are two types of asthma actually. So one is actually the allergic asthma. Yeah. And the other is the non-allergic. So the symptoms for both asthmas are quite the same as shortness of breath, you know, wheezing, chest tightness, etc. But these two types of uh, asthma are actually caused by different factors. So allergic uh, asthma is caused by exposure to allergens. Uh, such as, like, as example, pollen, uh, mold, pet dental, or uh, dust mites. <clears throat> so the cause of a uh, non-allergic asthma is not derived from the allergen. And the main reason is due to excessive uh, anxiety or sometimes uh, uh, caused by muscle contraction and aggravates the you know, patient asthma. So like exercise and also cold air. So have you actually noticed the same phenomenon, phenomenon you know, actually also occurs in too intense exercise, you know, uh, people with uh, this kind of uh, asthma, non-allergic asthma. So when we used to have, uh, we used to have like physical uh, education classes, you know, uh, in the school, and the teacher will first normally ask the students uh, who has asthma, that kind of stuff. And those students that have uh, asthma, they were told not to participate in the intense exercises. So some of the non-allergic Asthma is also caused by exposure to cold air, et cetera. So we are all familiar with the principle of thermal expansion, you know, like contraction expansion. And the same is true for the tranquil. So when cold air is inhaled, your tranquil uh, becomes narrow and the patient has symptoms such as shortness of breath, wheezing, chest tightness, et cetera. So now I hope everyone know how to distinguish it. So next, let's take a look at the allergy versus cold. Yeah, their symptoms can be very similar. So how do we distinguish it? You know, firstly, uh, respiratory uh, allergies and colds can also cause running nose, right? So and uh, nasal congestion and uh, uh, sneezing, wheezing, uh, watery eyes, and <clears throat> or itching uh, these eyes. Or but what exactly are the difference between the two? So let's start, start by, you know, the cause. So if it is an allergy, it's because of the contact with the allergens so that so there will be no fever. So not like, you know, you're having a flu, you will have fever. So most colds are caused by viruses. So in addition to the symptoms just mentioned, right, there will be no fever uh, or sore throat or no body aches, et cetera. For the warning period, <clears throat> so if an allergic person is exposed to an allergen, the symptoms will surface almost immediately. Yeah. So what about cold? So if he's infected with a cold virus for a few days before the symptoms surface, you know, uh, usually it takes a couple of days. So for the duration wise, um, if you're allergic, as long as you continue to be exposed to the uh, allergens, right, the symptoms will continue to occur. 
right? But having a cold means that you know it should clear up soon, like you know, the immune system can destroy the virus in a few days and the symptoms will disappear after that. So the difference is here, right? So earlier I mentioned about respiratory allergy. So next, let's look at another type of allergy. Skin allergy. So in our daily life, skin allergy is very common. You know, skin allergy can affect the patient's daily you know, lifestyle and work. It will become more serious if the preventive measures are, um, are no preventive measures are made, of course. So the most common skin allergy will cause, example, like blisters, uh, the redness, the itchy skin, and then you sometimes can see like you know dry skin or skin peeling. You know you tend to scratch it, and then you know of course you you peel off lah eventually. So what are the allergens that cause skin allergy? So the skin allergy main allergens are mostly related to drugs, cosmetics, chemicals, and metal related substances. Yep. So all this. So some people are allergic to uh, drugs, for example. Some people are allergic uh, towards antibiotics, for example. And some people are allergic towards uh, painkiller or allergic towards ointments application on the skin. And once applied, it will cause a very adverse reaction, like uh, allergic reaction symptoms include like you no know, redness reaction, sometimes around the eyes, sometimes swelling around the mouth area even. So if Compare with oral, that is if compared with the oral drugs, frequent partial like uh, you know, smear drugs, uh, drug injection will trigger allergy easily. So followed by uh, cosmetics, right? Cosmetics, uh, most women are careful in their cosmetic uh, selection. Some of them may be allergic towards uh, some of the ingredients. Usually immediate application will cause the itchiness, you know, instantly, redness or even skin peeling. So our daily use supplies also contain chemical materials, for example, like detergent powder, you know, dishwashing liquid. Some people can be allergic to those. Have you seen the people with uh, hand eczema? So when their hand touches some of these substances, it triggers this allergy uh, almost instantly and can even crack or bleed. So some people are allergic also to uh, some fabric like sweater, wool clothing. So once they wear it, it causes a very uh, this uh, allergic uh, symptoms as well. Followed by uh, metal also. So some people cannot wear you know, metal earrings and necklaces that contains all these metals. Whenever they wear it, the skin will start to have this redness, itchiness. Some portion of the skin will start to blacken even and will cause some pus. So if that is very serious. Lah. So therefore, they have to avoid wearing all these metals. And also, uh, mosquito bites will also cause allergy. So do you know what are the common skin allergy? So around 20% of people had atopic dermatitis problem, which is as, as, uh, uh, eczema. So well, this is, you know, 20% means that one every five person will have eczema problem. So actually, eczema is a common skin allergy. A lot of eczema are caused by basically food allergy. Yeah. What are other skin allergy problems such as, for example, rash, dermatitis, and boils, etc. So when it comes to food, right? So many people think that it will only affect you know, your digestion, but in fact, it will affect skin eczema as well as well as cardiovascular system too. So in fact, food allergies are so common nowadays that in the United States alone, 5.9 million children and 2.3 million adults are suffering from food allergies. So common food allergy symptoms are, for example, vomiting, uh, nausea, uh, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. Right? So do you have any friends that you know, experience this kind of thing before? You know, they are allergic. They have this uh, allergic reaction to food the moment they start eating it or you know, the, the moment they touch it, you know, put it in their mouth. So let's take a look at what kind of are uh, generally more likely to cause allergies. So main allergens in general are like uh, milk, eggs, fish, shellfish, you know, shellfish meaning, you know, the la la, your siham stuff. And then the nuts, especially like peanuts and other food that are other, other kind of foods in that region of nuts. There are also other foods that can be, uh, these are actually the foods that you can, you can get it quite easily outside. So, and can, can be consumed quite easily you know, in a restaurant. 
So have you noticed what will happen when people drink, example, uh, milk or eat uh, food that contain dairy products, and then they end up you know, vomiting and have diarrhea? Yeah. Some people's skin will immediately turn red uh, when they start eating you know, uh, seafood, example, shrimps, crabs, uh, shellfish, or even peanuts. Sometimes it will not, it will be just, not just be red, it will be swollen, itchy around the mouth area also. So this is also food allergy. So therefore, people who are allergic to certain food should be you know, especially, especially careful when choosing the food and pay attention to what food you are you know, allergic to. Sometimes some foods contain this ingredient can cause allergic, very severe allergic reaction. Yeah. So dairy products can trigger allergies, right? So um, dairy products are such as like, example, we are not talking about just milk, we are talking about cheese as well. You know, even milk tea are all made from milk, right? So however, some people may not be allergic to milk, but to the antibiotic inside the milk. So how did this happen? You know, milk, milk is produced by cow, am I right? So, so some farmer will inject actually the penicillin, which is an antibiotic into the cows, right? So uh, I may need to treat, actually treat the cows for this uh, mentalities. So then the milk is produced in the next 20, 48 hours will actually contain a very small amount of these antibiotics. So people who are you know, allergic to this antibiotic will cause these allergic symptoms if they drink the milk contaminated with these uh, antibiotics. So milk can also stimulate uh, the body to produce mucus, worsening the symptom of blocked lungs and cause wheezing. So another type uh, is uh, margarine. Margarine is actually uh, used to spread on the bread, you know, make pastry. It will increase the risk of asthma and uh, allergic uh, rhinitis. So this is because margarine is rich in omega-6 fatty acids, and it's easily, it can easily cause inflammation. So the possibility of triggering asthma can also increase because of that. So, um, so abstaining from all these dairy products can really improve asthma and allergic rhinitis. So let's take a look at a study of 24 asthmatic. Right. So according to uh, this 24 uh, asthmatic patients, they were actually put on a vegan diet for four months. Uh. The research actually report shows that and they point out that you know, 71 percent of the asthma patients have actually have improvement. You know, so the milk protein in milk may be most likely the likely cause of their this allergic asthma. Food allergy and uh, uh, intolerance, uh, actually they are two very different things. In fact, completely different things. So when we are sensitive to, uh, uh, to that food, it's just that you are more sensitive to that food. So especially when you are consuming milk, gluten, coffee, et cetera, right? Uh, there are some, there may be some symptoms sometimes and you may feel a little bit uncomfortable. Example, uh, you cause a reaction in your digestive system. Yeah, but generally it's not life-threatening. So it is just intolerance. So that's what we call sensitivity. Yeah. So for example, some people are, are this uh, lactose intolerance and uh, he may be missing an enzyme that can digest lactose. So, or maybe there are some people who have skin intolerance, which means that he will have uh, uh, like an indigestion after eating some food containing some kind of skin uh, texture or skin, skin kind of uh, meat over skin, that kind of stuff. So this is not an allergy. So it's just an intolerance. So if it is intolerance, our body can slowly like, adapt to it. For example, if you are intolerant to coffee at the beginning, you can drink a little bit of coffee and your heart will feel like, you know, it's beating quite fast. And then you can try, you know, then drink a little bit of coffee every day. And you'll find that your body will start to adapt very slowly to it and your heart will not beat so fast the next time you drink again. So, so intolerance can be adapted, but if you are allergic, then it's not, right? So what kind of environment will increase uh, the risk of allergies? Yeah, so in an excessive clean environment, the body will not be able to be, uh, be exposed to a certain type of uh, microorganism. Right. So actually exposing a child to a microorganism from an early age can enable him 
his uh, immune system or her immune system to learn and how to initiate a corresponding defense response. So it's easy to cause allergy if the immune system is not or never be exposed to enough uh, microorganism to train for it. So this is especially true for uh, example, small scale family. That means that uh, there's only one child in the family with uh, less contact with uh, animals, for example, there are no pets in the house, for example. Uh, they have uh, uh, less contact with uh, so-called harmful bacteria, you know, going out, that kind of stuff. So therefore, and also uh, possibly also because of an excessive clean environment uh, from uh, living together with someone with OCD, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder example. Uh. So always, uh, you know, uh, such people will tend to, you know, like sterilize everywhere in the house. Uh, to, and that actually actually increase the chance for one to become very allergic to something, especially the child to become allergic. So scientists also have found that you know, in countries with very poor sanitation condition, example, the children that's found to have uh, parasites in their body, it seems to have lowered the possibility of having asthma or becoming allergic. So this is because why? Because their immune system is focusing on attacking this uh, parasite and will not pay attention to the pollen that is actually harmless to the body. So in short, the allergy mean that you know, our, our immune system has actually no, no real enemies to fight with, and then they get bored and then they attack their, themselves, our body. Yeah, maybe, yeah. So how can we prevent allergies? So for one, uh, for expecting mother especially, I'm sure that you wish, you know, uh, your the expecting mother baby uh, grow up healthy and be free of uh, allergy. So here are some tips uh, for um, expecting mothers. You know, avoid smoking, inhaling secondhand smokes during pregnancy, and then consume the right amounts of nuts. So if expecting mother is not allergic to it, not allergic, they can start consuming the uh, right amount of nuts, not too much, obviously. So also, uh, if healthy, you know, if uh, the expecting mother is healthy, then try. Uh, uh, that means uh, no, ha not having any kind of uh, serious medical condition, then go for natural birth. Yeah, so why so? Uh? So because baby that's born naturally will pass through the mother birth canal and the babies born by cesarean section uh, will be deficient in this uh, bacilli, bacillia uh, without passing through the birth canal. So for a newborn baby, this harmful bacillia can be uh, used for the baby immune uh, cells to train the immune system. So on contrary, if the baby does not come in contact with this bacillus, then through the uh, through the, bus, uh, the birth canal, right? Then his immune system may not have anything to train with. Yeah, and this can lead to allergies later on. So therefore, baby born by cesarean section are actually five times more likely to have allergies than babies born naturally. So, uh, and then any tips for the parents, of course, and no, try uh, breastfeeding as much as possible because breast milk is good for the baby health and uh, help the children maintain a healthy weight, you know, because why? Because of overweight and obese children can increase the risk of allergies. Yeah. And then let the let baby four to six months old exposed to food that are prone to allergies, for example, you know, uh, eating a very small amount of uh, nuts and uh, maybe eggs can help prevent allergies. So uh, for babies that's under two years old, uh, avoid taking antibiotic because antibiotic can lead to asthma. So at present, there are no medication that can uh, completely cure allergies, but can only help to relieve the symptoms. So there are some drugs commonly used to uh, relieve uh, allergic symptoms. Uh, so for example, steroid, antihistamine, uh, this contestant for those with uh, nasal issues. So although this drug can relieve the allergic uh, symptoms such as sneezing and running nose, but this drug comes with a serious side effect. Uh. For example, regular use of this uh, steroid will actually suppress the overall immune system function can result in uh, easier infection by bacteria and viruses and increase the risk of cancer as well. So if these drugs you know, are used for a long time, right, uh, it can also affect the growth uh, of the, and development of the children. 
So some people also don't want uh, to use uh, you know, Western medicine as well. You know, they, they tend to think that it's better to use Chinese medicine instead. But actually don't take it so lightly. You know? All these medicine actually all have a certain level of toxicity. Yeah, so like all kind of medicine, uh, once the concentration or the dosage of example, the Chinese medicine is too high, right? There will always be side effect. So by the way, many uh, Western medicines are also extracted from Chinese medicine anyway, you know? So, you know, both Chinese medicine and Western medicine actually comes, you know, with side effects like, in that manner. Like. So because they came from the same place anyway. So are there any other methods we, that you know, we can use that, that doesn't have any side effect and can treat allergies? So uh, we can fight against allergy with the power of nature, yeah. So the power of nature comes from plants, including, example, cactus, uh, American ginseng, uh, cordyceps mycelium, uh, rose, ashitaba, silver husk, soy. So uh, when in a uh, allergic state, right, our body will be in a state of uh, actually inflammation. And cactus is rich in more than 10,000 phytochemicals uh, of types of phytochemicals. So it can actually exert this anti-inflammatory uh, function to relieve allergic symptoms. And also the ability to accelerate tissue regeneration and wound healing. And cactus is also rich in uh, nutrients uh, called uh, colloid that can cover stomach and uh, gastrointestinal tract to relieve the digestive tract problem. Uh, next, uh, most people with allergy will also you know, experience some kind of fatigue because of the allergies, right? So American ginseng actually can replenish, uh, the, uh, and replenish your energy and relieve the fatigue, right? It can also quickly uh, so-called uh, transport oxygen, nutrients, and immune cells in the body to the whole body. It can strengthen the function of the lung. Uh, and uh, studies have shown that American ginseng can alleviate cold symptoms as well as you know, re, uh, reduce the number of days you, know, you are having the cold, that means recover earlier and can prevent respiratory uh, infections as well. Cordyceps mycelium is uh, actually very rich in uh, polysaccharides uh, and give two ways uh, this uh, normalizing effect. So what exactly is this two way normalizing effect? Um, is actually to, uh, is to you know, activate a very weak uh, immune system. And at the same time, uh, let's say you are overreactive, right? It is to stabilize the overreactive immune system. So therefore, cordyceps can actually improve immune system disorder and disease caused by it. So including cancers, allergies, and even lupus, etc. So it also has this uh, anti-inflammatory uh, uh, and anti-infective effect. So it can actually fight viruses. So cordyceps can also strengthen the function of heart, kidney, and lung, uh, and reduce <clears throat> and relieve sorry and relieve cough and reduce flames. So the Beijing uh, this um, medical college actually conducted a, a study of more than fifty asthma patients and found that a group of people with, who actually took the cordyceps had their symptoms relieved by 81% within five days. And then next, uh, roses. Roses are very rich in antioxidants. So the vitamin C in the buds of uh, these roses is 50 times higher than lemons. So what are the effects of this super antioxidant on people with allergies, right? So the most troublesome things for people with skin allergies are dry skin and dandruff. So a uh, regular scratching, you know, itching and can lead to, you know, actually lead to skin uh, ulcers. So you need to take high antioxidants such as roses, which can promote uh, the body ability to produce this uh, required uh, collagen and accelerate the skin repair and wound healing. So moreover, the, uh, this uh, antioxidant of roses can also prevent this DNA uh, damage, strengthen the body immune system, help reduce inflammation as well, and promote uh, wound healing, relieve allergic symptoms as well. So ashitaba, 
Well, here is actually a very magical plant with super vitality in nature. So if let's say you were to pick its leaf today, it will grow new shoots tomorrow. So this magical plant is called Ashitaba. So Ashitaba is a uh, contain these flavonoids which can reduce risk of cancer, heart disease, um, heart disease and asthma and stroke. So Ashitaba also contain you know uh, this uh, yellow angelica uh, alcohol B C E which can inhibit uh, the release of uh, histamine, thereby preventing allergic reaction. So sounds like antihistamine, right? So chlorophyll in it has can also promote the uh, growth of uh, probiotics in the intestine, thereby preventing allergies. So there's a popular saying that, you know, uh, an apple a day keep the doctor away. So in addition to the plentiful of uh, phytochemicals and antioxidants, one apple with skin uh, actually contain about 4.4 grams of fiber. And then with your skin, you, you are only getting about 2.1 gram. So if that is so, uh, so accurately you should be saying that, you know, uh, the same should be changed to uh, 10 apples a day to keep the doctors away. So why so? Uh, because the... Uh, U.S. government dietary uh, guidelines in the 2015 recommend that women need about 25 grams of fiber a day, and men need uh, about 30 grams a day. So lack of fiber will lead to lack of probiotics in the intestine, right? And uh, fiber can promote the diversity of probiotics in the intestine, which can, has been shown to reduce allergy. So there are two main categories of this uh, fiber as well. So there's the uh, soluble and the insoluble. So insoluble fiber does not uh, dissolve in water, while soluble, of course, does. Uh. So soluble fiber uh, form a protective film around and protect the, uh, the uh, intestine linings. Whereas the insoluble fibers help our bowels by forming mass that move through our digestive system. And it's the key prevent key to preventing some of the uh, digestive uh, conditions such as diarrhea, constipation. Yeah. So therefore, we strongly recommend using cinnamon husk because every 100 grams of cinnamon husk contains 71 grams of soluble fiber, which is seven times more than that of oats. Yeah. So why do we need protein every day? So because the main function of protein is to build tissue, it's the main structural component of all cells of a human body, you know, whether it's skin, hair, nails, bones. You know. so, but I mentioned earlier that all kinds of animal foods such as uh, eggs, uh, seafood, dairy products, protein can cause many types of allergies. So not to mention that animal food contain high cholesterol, also, but also high calories and fat intake can cause overweight as well or obesity in the children, which may increase, again, the risk of allergies. So by removing dairy products, right, helps asthma and allergic rhinitis. So how do we choose the source of protein? Soy is one, actually one of the best source of protein. Soy bean contains 36 to 56% protein. So it's protein, uh, it's actually two times that of meat, three times that of eggs, Twelve times that of milk. Yep. So protein, uh, so protein can also increase the proportion of uh, you know, your muscle and the band. You can actually burn fats, burn calories, prevent of obesity, and reduce allergies. Yep. And soybean does not contain cholesterol, obviously, and is low in calories and fat. It's also rich in uh, essential amino acids and uh, vitamins and fiber for our body. <clears throat> So studies have also shown that after four months of vegan diet for 24 asthmatic, 71% have improved, right? So children grow up fast and so they need to be supplemented with highest quality of uh, soy protein to help them grow and improve their memory as well as their learning ability. So there is actually currently no cure for allergy. Uh, only certain medication that may relieve the symptoms. So what should we do to keep ourselves away from all this allergy? I mean, first, we had to figure out, you know, figure out which are the allergens that, you know, if you are allergic to something. 
No, we may observe our daily activities to determine the allergens. For example, you know, jot down what kind of food cause your skin to become redness or to, to have the redness or the itchiness. So this is effective in a way that you know, we should practice every single day to find out what trigger that your allergy. So secondly, uh, conducting you know, skin or blood tests can also identify the substance that you are allergic to. Therefore, actually the only way to prevent allergy is to figure out the allergens and completely avoid your exposure to it for at least five to seven years. So this may reduce the condition of, uh, of our body towards uh, allergens and eventually elevates the allergy reaction. So please remember, please remember, don't try to challenge the allergens as you will increase the severity of allergic reaction. There's this uh, shocking news uh, some years ago uh, where a lady died from an allergy reaction after kissing her boyfriend uh, who has eaten peanuts. So this news has been resurfacing uh, now and then to spread the awareness of allergic uh, reaction. So we must not always, must not always uh, underestimate the severity of allergic reaction. However, there are also some people who have cured their allergy naturally. Therefore, we must always do our best to keep a healthy lifestyle. Now, let me share with you the secret of health and longevity. So I believe uh, you know, we all know how important is our immune system. So a healthy immune system can protect us from more than 90% of diseases. Therefore, we must master the science of nutritional immunology to take care of our immune system. Besides that, there are four important habits that we must practice every day to achieve health and longevity. So first, sufficient sleep. So why is it important to have a sufficient sleep? So research shown that you know, the fatality of uh, mice uh, with insufficient sleep uh, where the mice with, uh, uh, compared with mice with sufficient sleep, uh, actually the one with sufficient sleep live longer. So insufficient sleep can cause the growth of a cancerous cell as well, uh, hallucination as well as death. Therefore, we must get enough sleep, at least six to eight hours every day. Next, uh, exercise regularly. So exercise is extremely good for our lymphatic circulation and boosting our immune system to fight diseases. Next, uh, be joyful and cheerful. So research shown that joyful people has less chance of having heart diseases and tend to have healthier blood pressure, cholesterol levels, etc. So lastly, maintain a balanced diet. Yeah. So nutritional immunology taught us the three essential nutrients for a strong immune system, which um, is phytochemical, antioxidant, and polysaccharides. <clears throat> so with a strong immune system, we can achieve health and longevity. So with this, I will end my sharing. I wish everybody good health and happiness. Thank you. Over to you, uh, MC. Thank you. Thank you, Darren, for your sharing. So after his sharing, I'm sure that you have a better understanding on the different types of allergies and how to differentiate between allergy and the common cold and also the plant food from nature to help with allergy as well. And also very importantly to identify our own allergens and avoid these allergens. So thank you Darren for sharing. So today we also invited a friend to share with us her experience with her children suffering from asthma. So before I invite her to share, she did share that her four children had been suffering from asthma attacks since young and had been on long-term medication. So as a mother, how did she help her children improve their health alongside with nutritional immunology? As she is not able to make it today, Danny will be helping her to share her testimony on her behalf. And I would like to seek your cooperation not to take any photo and video during the sharing. So let's welcome Daniel. Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel. So tonight I would like to share my friends, Tracy's children's uh, testimony. So my friends, uh, she has four children and has been suffering from this uh, asthma attack since young and has been on this uh, long-term medication. So I would like to share some photos. So you can see that the children are actually of, often uh, sick with uh, flu and cold and resulting in this uh, frequent breathing difficulty. 
And doctor reasoned that the breathing difficulties were caused by their existing uh, asthmatic conditions. And once when the children were in the hospital under treatments for asthma, uh, my friend Tracy actually saw her children uh, looking very helplessly weak, even wheezing and having uh, this uh, difficulty in breathing. So she asked the doctor why the children were having this uh, difficulty in breathing. And the doctor replied that the asthma is a long-term disease that affecting the lung and causes the airway to get inflamed and swollen and resulting in these uh, narrow airways and causing these uh, breathing difficulties. An inhaler may help them to breathe better and in turn uh, improve their appetite. So as they have been falling sick very often, so it's common for them to be using this uh, inhaler every two to three months. So it has been exhorting for the parents to taking care of the children with such uh, medical conditions. And both parents are almost at this uh, mental breakdown while tackling this uh, children's uh, medical condition. And due to this uh, tight, uh, due to this uh, busy work schedule, and at the same time, to the extent that my friend Tracy almost uh, lost her job trying to meet the work schedule then. And she also attempted to solve these uh, medical issues by trying uh, uh, several supplemental products from various companies, as well as uh, Chinese medicine, and even try some uh, unconventional home remedies such as uh, crocodile meat. However, she has not seen any uh, improvements from all this. So the relative even tried to convincing her to try the raw red meat and even the bats meat, but she refused because of the bacteria con concern. She knew that the only way to improve her children's health is through the diet. So she decided not to give the children any sweets even chocolate, ice cream, candy, peanuts, fried chicken, no. So the children once asked the mother, mommy, why can't we eat these things like the other children? And even the relative also questioned her. Tracy, these snacks are parts of children's childhood. So if you don't give them any, where is their childhood? So she was actually in this uh, dilemma and feel very helpless to answer such questions. She knew that giving all these snacks to the children, which means that taking away their childhood and ending up actually spending more time in the hospital. And it was fortunate that uh, Tracy managed to learn about this uh, nutritional immunology. And she understood that medications that only helps to re relieve the symptoms, but unable to help her children gain back their health. So with this understanding, uh, Tracy actually started to having her children consume uh, cactus, American ginseng, cactus fruit, acelera cherries, and variety of uh, mushroom polysaccharides such as uh, ABM mushroom, uh, cordyceps mycelium, shiitake, and uh, maitake. So she has seen very huge improvements in her children's health. And she's very grateful for Dr. Chen for developing a plant food that eventually help them to gain back their health. And now you can see that the children are actually, uh, they, they can enjoy. Our next slide, you can see the children can actually enjoy their all their childhood snacks. And this photo was taken when the children had this uh, ice cream for the very, very first time. So congratulations to Tracy's children for regaining back their health. So Daniel, just now the ingredients you mentioned earlier, so where can we find these ingredients from? Yeah. So the ingredients or we call the plant foods that the children uh, has been taking, uh, all these uh, uh, from the elite, these are the rosy thyme, uh, immunity, as well as uh, resodi. So the children has been continuing, uh, consuming all these uh, products. And my sharings end here. Thank you. So that, uh, thank you, Daniel, for your sharing. So through the sharing, I can actually relate a lot to myself because I used to suffer from allergies as well since young. And also I was like banned from eating a lot of things. And also getting through the symptoms were very tough as well. So really happy that her kids have improved their health at such a young age. So let's congratulate them once again for beginning back their health. So before I continue, I'd like to highlight that elite products are plant-based foods, which are very beneficial for health maintenance. 
However, ELIT does not advocate, advocate any form of self-diagnosis or medical treatment. If you have any medical condition, please seek professional medical help. So thank you to all the speakers for their sharing today. So after all their sharing, some of you may have some questions. So we will open some time for the questions to roll in and we will try our best to answer everyone's questions. So are there any questions you may uh, voice out or type in into the chat box? So I do see a question in the chat box asking when we are done with a cold or fever, should we be medicated immediately? So thank you for your question. So anyone from the Q&A team can help to answer this question. Uh, Jia En, this is Joy. I can Hello. help to answer this question. Okay, thank you. Okay. So good evening, everyone. I'm Joy. Thank you for this question. This is in fact a very good question as I also used to think that once we fall sick, we will need to take medicine immediately in order to get well faster. In today's society, due to the heavy focus on medical care and the emphasis on efficiency, many people like me also place all our hopes on medication in the past to recover from illnesses in order to quickly carry on with their fast-paced lifestyle. So let us begin by examining uh, what happens when we fall sick. Okay, let me share my slide. Okay. So when we fall sick, we will have symptoms such as fever, cough, and runny nose. Actually, a fever is not an illness by itself. A lot of times, they are actually caused by viral infections, and having fever is just a sign that the immune system is hard at work. And during an infection, the immune system raises the body's temperature by secreting certain chemicals to increase the production and the activities of our immune cells. And by doing so, it slows down the foreign invaders' ability to reproduce. When we take medicine, we will lower the fever and it will make it more difficult for the immune system to overcome the infection. And uh, furthermore, when we have cough and runny nose, um, these are actually the body's natural reaction to produce phlegm to, so that um, we are good to expel them from our body through the coughing and the runny nose. And again, this is a, just a sign that the body is fighting a virus and the phlegm is just a way to allow the body to get rid of the virus or bacteria that invaded our body. And as many people, as mentioned earlier, many people also re will resort to taking medication once the symptoms start to appear. What does this um, medication actually do to our body? Do they really help us to uh, make us uh, well? So let's now look at, take a look at the next table here. Okay, here is a listing of all the, the, all the common medication and the possible side effects. And firstly, here we have med uh, cough medication and the possible side effect will be addiction to this uh, cough medication. And the other one will be very commonly used fever medication to um, reduce our fever. Actually, fever medicine is very harmful to our liver and uh, kidney, and it may cause the failure. Okay, and uh, if you if we take a look at the historical trend, there are actually um, fever medicine actually are linked to about four hundred fifty deaths in the U.S. every year. Okay, so we have really have to think twice when we are consuming, you know, all this medication. The next one is antibiotics. Antibiotics actually um, kills bacteria, but it, it can also cause bacteria resistance if we consume too much of it. And at the same time, it can also cause allergic reaction. Okay, coming next to steroid, just now Darren also mentioned something about steroids. Yes, um, it's a medication to suppress our immune system to prevent things like allergies or other type of uh, uh, symptoms uh, in the body, but it has an increased risk of cancer. Okay, the next one that is very common is painkiller. Um, it can help, it can actually um, result in peptic ulcer bleeding in the stomach. So that's why sometimes uh, if a doctor prescribes painkiller, they may also prescribe things that are that to protect our gastric, our stomach. And also it may uh, cause liver damage. So there are indeed a lot of side effects in medication. So 
for myself through learning more about nutritional immunology, I understand more that the best doctor in the world is actually our very own immune system. So now let's take a look at what our immune system can do. Okay, firstly on the left, we have our B cells. B cells are responsible to produce the antibodies to fight off viruses and bacteria. And they are capable of producing 1 billion different types of antibodies in our lifetime. And most importantly, it has a memory function. So when it hits, uh, when it encounters the same virus or bacteria again the next time, it will more quickly be able to get it out of our body. Okay. And most importantly, also there is no side effect com uh, compared to you know taking like a medicine, antibiotic medicine. So in the medical world, right, antibiotics actually only have no more than 300 types. And um, other than um, not being able to fight the viruses, yeah, it can also only fight bacteria. It may cause uh, some of the side effects that I have mentioned uh, earlier. The next immune cell is the microphage on the right. Microphage actually are, um, they are capable of cleansing the body of debris and our aged blood cells. And besides this, they also secrete certain chemicals to summon other immune cells to the battle sites to fight off foreign invader. And the result is that it will secrete all these um, foreign invaders through our body's um, daily output or through the phlegm or the pus that we may sometimes encounter through in our infection. Okay. So how can we actually ensure that the immune cells do their work in our body to keep us healthy instead of relying fully on medication? This is where the study of nutritional immunology comes in. The science has been researched for more than 30 years to study three key disease-fighting nutrients such as phytochemicals, antioxidant, and polysaccharide. Okay. In our daily diet, actually, we do not lack the, lack the basic nutrients for survival. We consume a lot of food that contains carbohydrate, proteins, and vitamins. But in fact, many people are lacking the three nutrients to help build up a balanced immune system. Okay. Firstly, we have uh, phytochemicals. Okay. I will just run through the key ingredients um, as what Darren has also shared earlier. Cactus has a lot of uh, phytochemicals, 10,000 different types. And compared to an orange with that only has about 100 types, it is like 100 times better than uh, just consuming a pure orange. Cactus itself also have disease-fighting properties, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, in inhibit tumor formation, reduce LDL cholesterol, and also prevent high blood sugar levels. And the next nutrient is antioxidant, uh, where rose contains a lot of it. It helps to balance and regulate our body's defense function as well through the high antioxidant level. The antioxidant helps to prevent the free radical damage, promote wound healing, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, in, encourages the immune system's cleansing function and boosts the immune system. Finally, the third key nutrient is polysaccharide, and this can be found in cordyceps mycelium. It empowers a weakened immune system and also soothes it when it is overactive. Okay, and besides cordyceps mycelium, various types of mushroom like APM mushroom, maitake, shiitake mushroom also contain polysaccharides that can promote the action of our microphage and the natural killer cell. So by doing so, actually our immune cells can destroy vi viruses faster, inhibit the tumor growth, and also defend against the further spreading of tumor to other parts of the body. And to summarize, my sharing today, actually illness comes with symptoms that are just a reflection of uh, what our immune system, um, reflection that our immune system is actually hard at work. So medication only help to reduce the symptom, but not the recovery from an illness. It, the recovery is still very much dependent on our immune system. So fever itself, it is it, it, if it is below 40 degrees, it's actually not life-threatening and we can recover faster from an illness by building up our immune system through consuming food that are high in phytochemicals, 
antioxidant and polysaccharide. Yeah. So I hope I have helped to answer this question. Thank you. Thank you, Joy, for answering the question. So previously, I also have this question in mind because uh, normally when I'm unwell, so normally I think that I should take the medication immediately, right? So after Joy's explanation, we understand that when we are done with a cold or fever, it's a signal that our immune system is working hard to fight off these bacteria and viruses. We can, of course, seek a doctor's advice for the medication to help temporarily relieve these symptoms. And of course, pair it with the the plant foods that are high in phytochemicals, antioxidants, and polysaccharides to help us recover faster. So thank you, Joy, for your explanation. So does anyone have any more questions? So looking at the chat box here, uh, I don't see any questions for now. So we will end the Q&A session over here. So let me update you on our upcoming activities 